Calculating landing distance for dispatch is not something we do very often because this is done again by dispatch. The computerized flight plan, the operational flight plan package that we receive, will already have calculated and verified all these values. We can simply just extract the information from the flight plan. However, and this is where we need to place a lot of emphasis now on this performance course, having to calculate in-flight performance is key. In-flight performance and in-flight landing distance, IFLD, is where we spend a bit more time explaining the procedure on how to calculate it. Let's first define what is in-flight landing distance. RLD, required landing distance, was calculating the distance required for dispatch. In-flight landing distance is calculating the distance that I need to be able to land and stop the aircraft from 50 feet down to a ground speed of zero. But here, we're considering seven seconds for the flare at V approach. Braking is the same. It considers brakes, spoilers, anti-skid, and reverse thrust, except on dry runway. V approach is the same, 1.23 at 50 feet. Touchdown at 96% of V approach and not at V approach. Maximum braking after touchdown, no slope and ISA condition. So besides a little bit of leeway here on the V approach, it is pretty much the same. But here's the thing. In-flight landing distance takes into consideration the actual conditions at any given time. It is corrected for the weight of the aircraft at the time, speed, airport elevation, headwind or tailwind, temperature and runway slope. These right here are parameters that you have available to you in flight when you need to calculate this landing distance in flight. So needless to say, this is something the crew will be tasked to do if the circumstances calls for it in the cockpit. In-flight landing distances are longer than actual landing distances. They are, however, not longer than required landing distances. They are more exact because they take into consideration all the things that we can't necessarily take into consideration when we calculate RLD. In-flight landing distances are achievable by line pilots. So when you and I land an aircraft, that day we are aiming to do in-flight landing distance performance, if you will. You and me will not be able to perform the exact same landing every single time consistently. And it also has a lot to do with the outside conditions. But IFLD is close to what we can achieve on the line. It brings us to the last definition, and that's called factored landing distance. In order to cover a variety of different flying techniques and unexpected conditions at landing, the crew should apply a certain margin to the in-flight landing distance. You see, the in-flight landing distance uses exact corrections, if you will, for the given set of circumstances, so they are close to the actual landing distance. It doesn't have the same margin, the 1.66, that the required landing distance did. And so, a safety margin should be added to the in-flight landing distance. Airbus recommends to add 15% to the in-flight landing distance to obtain what we call factored landing distance. Under exceptional circumstances, such as an emergency, the crew may disregard this margin. But let me make it clear. This margin is not optional for you to add or not. Whenever we calculate landing distances in flight, failures or not, we add that 15%. And if our factored landing distance is less than or equal to the landing distance available, then we will attempt the landing. If not, we will not attempt it unless it is indeed an absolute emergency. So factored landing distance is what we are looking to calculate. We will calculate the in-flight landing distance at the margin to get the factored landing distance. Now let's look at calculating in-flight landing distance and factored landing distance with failures. We will start with examples and calculating it using the QRH, and then we will move on to examples from the EFB. I have upgraded my example right here 
to land now on runway 32 left, which has 2,700 meters of available runway. I do, however, have from the ATIS picked up that the runway is now covered with 20 millimeters of wet snow. There's an estimated surface friction report that says the runway conditions are medium to poor. I have a 21 knot headwind component. I'm estimated to be landing at 58 tons with a normal CG. And I want to calculate this for an optimum configuration for landing. So I will be calculating both for config 3 and for config 4. And for config 3 and 4, I will compare the two to find the one that gives me the greatest margin to the end of the runway. I have selected auto thrust to be on during this and maximum manual braking. From the status page in the ECAM, we have a hydraulic green system low pressure failure that we need to consider. Let's determine the V-approach and the factored landing distance. This is a scenario that can very easily play out in real life. A single failure, and you have to determine if you can still land. And if so, what is your landing distance that you need, as well as your V-approach. The landing distance procedure apply message will appear on the status page in the ECAM when you need to do in-flight landing performance as we do right now. So whenever you see this right here, this will be the indication to go ahead and calculate your in-flight and factored landing distance as follows. Always start in a matrix. So we start right here. We have 20 millimeters of wet snow. Well, that gives us a landing performance of medium but there is an estimated surface friction report here that says medium to poor. And if I have two, I do not interpolate between the two. I stay conservative. And so I'm going to choose the worst of the two and base my performance on that to know that I'm safe. So here I have a medium to poor with a maximum crosswind of 20 knots. I will type that down and then I will go to the page here for V-approach determination with failure. It is not the same table as before. That was without failure. This is with failure. The chart, if I bring it a little bit closer, will have up in the top again the formula for calculating the V-approach. So V-approach is... V ref plus delta V ref plus approach correction. Well, before it said V approach was VLS plus approach correction. Why does it say V ref? Well, that is because V ref, when you have failures, is considered VLS for config 4. Whether or not you land with config 3 or config 4, if you have failures, your VREF is your VLS for config 4. In our systems modules of this course, talking about how to calculate the V approach, I also there described how VLS for config 4 gets a different name. It's called VREF. And so here we're simply using VREF as the reference speed for VLS to calculate. V approach. Now, if that seems a little bit complicated, I do understand. But V ref right here is VLS for config 4, and it is used whether you use config 3 or 4 for the landing. But this only applies if you're doing failure cases. So here I will find my V ref based on the CG position, or if I want to use my MCDU, I can do that as well. Just go into the approach performance page. Make sure you have config full selected and then read off the VLS value. If you have selected config 3, it will give you a different VLS value and that is not VREF. Even if you are to land with config 3, go in, choose config full, read off the VLS, and then change the configuration back on the performance page to config 3 for landing. But VREF is based on config full. 
for my scenario today, I will choose on find my VREF. And then to that, I have to add my delta VREF. My delta VREF is the speed increment that the failure adds to the V approach. For every failure that you have, it will add a speed to your V approach, an increment for that failure. Call it a correction. So in order for me to find my delta VREF, I would have to go to the actual failure that I have. Flip over the pages, and you will start to see these failure tables divided into systems. I will flip the pages until I find the hydraulic system. And once I find the hydraulic system, I will find there that there are six tables underneath the hydraulic system, one for each performance level. I will continue to flip the pages until I find the performance level that I have today, which for me was medium to poor. Once I have the correct table, I will find the failure, hydraulic green system low pressure, and it says right there, config full, delta V ref zero, but for config three, delta V ref six. That means if I choose to land in config full, then the failure does not add anything to my V approach. But if I choose to land in config three, then it adds six knots as an increment to my V approach speed. Coming back to my table here for calculating V approach with failure, I now know what my delta V ref is, I know what my V ref is, now I need to apply the approach correction. The approach correction that needs to be applied, you can see it has been expanded from before, depends on the value of the delta V ref you just found. You see, the way that you apply it is you either apply this portion that I marked or this portion or this portion. One of these three will be used as the approach correction. And which one is determined by the value, as you can see out in the left portion there, of the delta V ref. My delta V ref was 0 or 6. So that is less than 10. So I will use this portion and forget about the other two. So my approach correction for the V approach speed is 5 knots in case you have auto thrust on, 5 or 10 knots if you have ice accretion, or one third of the headwind. In my case, I have auto thrust on, as you can see here. So that is 5 knots. I also have headwind, 21 knots, so one third of that is 7. Their highest, the approach correction is the highest of these four. So that would be seven in this case. Now you pay attention to the little note that is here at the bottom of the marked rectangular. And that says approach correction plus delta V ref must not exceed 20 knots. Well, ours doesn't because we have seven knots for the approach correction and six knots for config 3 for the delta V ref. So we're okay. But if we had a high delta V ref, we may have been limited. Let's put them together. Here we can see that our V approach in config 4 would be 128 plus, there was no delta V ref, plus the 7, 135. But if I am to land in config 3, then it'll be 128 plus 6 for the delta V ref, plus 7 knots for the headwind. And that gives me a higher V approach. Already there we can see that potentially the flap freeze option here is going to give me a longer distance as well since I have more speed. So let's look at that now. The note that was there before still applies and it states here for the next tables for the landing distance table. Do not apply correction from the speed column if your approach correction was equal to one third of the headwind, and it was, we used the headwind, so no speed correction. Method for determining the V approach right here, we are now on the second part, which is the landing distance calculation. The landing distance calculation, I will then go back to the table for hydraulics and then medium to poor, 
This is the same one we were looking at before. But now, instead of looking for the delta V ref, we will read off the reference distance for landing. Again, based on a 66-ton aircraft, I'm not 66, so we will apply down there is the note for weight below. And then I will apply corrections as follows for the individual configurations, for the altitude, and for the reverse thrust. When we compare the two, we get an in-flight landing distance for Config 4, 2,340 meters, and an in-flight landing distance for landing Config 3 of 2,700 meters. Needless to say, I will still need to compare them with their factored values, so adding 15% to both of them. I get a factored landing distance, which only allows me to land Config 4, doesn't it? Because I had 2,700 meters of landing distance available, so only config 4 would be sufficient. That was calculating using the QRH for a single failure. Let's try the same for the in flight landing distance and factored landing distance with failure on an EFB. The scenario right here remains the same. I have only changed the level of contaminants on the runway to 3 millimeters of wet snow and that is because my software on the EFB since it's a demo version is a bit limited. I do have a pirate right here that says good to medium but I'm going to have to disregard that since it's not an option for me to choose all the surface friction levels in this limited software. We will now use the EFB to determine the V approach and the factored landing distance. Choosing in flight, I will now choose runway 32 left. I will then choose my conditions for wind, outside air temperature, QNH, etc. I will choose my landing weight at 62 tons. Automatic configuration gives me a comparison between 3 and 4, which is what I want. And then, having filled in the other information, I'll come down to manual landing with auto thrust on and braking mode manual braking i get credit for reverses this is not a dry runway and this is where the failure now comes in after i've filled everything out here i'll go to the bottom and i'll click on the ecam tab if i had any configuration deviation this cdl item or an mel item i will pick them from the respective tab here in a similar manner since this is an in-flight calculation based on an ECAM failure. I'll click ECAM, choose hydraulics, and then choose the failure, which in my case here is the green system low pressure, and click done. All information looks good. I have the failure set in, and I'll hit compute, and then I will get my landing distance on four different pages for config 3 and config let me bring them up a little bit closer and let's take a look. We can see right here that for flaps 4, we have a margin of 645 meters and a factored landing distance of 2,055 meters. But when we compare that to landing with flaps 3, which has a higher V approach, our margin is 465 meters only with almost 200 meters longer for the factored landing distance. If we flip both of them to the next page and give us a little bit more information, comparing the two, it's clear to see that the landing is preferred in flaps of full as it gives us the greatest margin. But also notice that the V ref for both of them is 138, whether it's landing config full or config 3. Delta V ref for config 3 was 6, and it's 0 for config full. And approach correction is 7 knots. This was a short video on a specific topic. If you want to see the full video or see the hundreds of videos we made available for professional content on aviation theory, head on to our e-learning academy at academy.mindspacex.com. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow us. We're going to be putting out these videos regularly.